Good morning, everybody. I'd like to call to order the City Council meeting dated Wednesday, July 15th. Uh, we are having this conference uh, commission meeting by teleconference real soon. Uh, and uh, we have uh, uh, Commissioner Williams and myself uh, sitting at City Hall. Hopefully, all you can hear me through this mask because it's, um, it's uh, mandatory for to wear masks in all uh, city owned buildings. So in order to get started, um, I'll ask Commissioner Williams to uh, give us an invocation. You can remain seated where you are. Please bow your heads. Bow your heads. Eternal God, our Father, we come now in the precious name of Jesus. We say thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to serve this great city in which we live. We ask now, God, that you would give us grace and understanding and forgiveness in this day. Father God, that whatever decisions we make here tonight, God, it should be your will and your glory. We ask these blessings in Jesus. Thank Amen. Uh, normally we do our Pledge of Allegiance, uh, so I will recite the pledge uh, myself. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, as we get started with our meeting, is there anything we need to add to our agenda tonight? Yes, sir, Mr. Mitt. Uh, I'd like to add an item on the city attorney item. Can you hear me now? I, I think we have to mute the public kiosk to allow the commissioners to speak and then unmute the kiosk when members of the public might speak. Cause I think there's feedback between the two. Yeah, this is Kyle. Um, Commissioner Williams just needs to stay muted the whole time. And if we could get a mic in front of him, all the sounds running through the house system. So as long as the mic's on from it, he will be heard. All right, that makes sense. Thank you. I don't think the mic is on. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Commissioner, we let someone else uh, add the agenda item, please, for me. I'll make a motion that we uh, uh, add to the agenda under the attorney's office, uh, consider approval of compensation agreement between the city of Brunswick and Gallagher Marine Systems, LLC. Second. Okay, then probably motion second to uh, add item 5A under the city attorney item which is considered approval of compensation agreement between City of Brunswick and Gallagher Marine System, LLC. Are there any further questions, comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, folks have the same right, it seems like the ayes have it. Uh, okay, we add that be item 5A. Also, I would like to ask the commission to uh, add an item under discussion. Uh, you can put it under uh, the Mayor Harvey's item if you want to. Uh, add discussion on the mandatory wearing of, of, of face masking uh, in the city of Brunswick. Second. No, I, I need well, a motion. Know, okay, I'll offer a motion that I'll we, second it. That we would add item 6A to our agenda under the mayor's item to man, for mandatory face masks in the city of Brunswick. Second. Motion seconds for the add an item to uh, our agenda and further discussion. Here and all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed at the same right. It seems the ayes have it. Okay, we'll add that item to item 6A. Um, okay, I want to thank uh, all who came out to. Uh, our meeting, all who are on 
on uh, online too as well, attendance for our meeting. We're gonna get right, right into it. Item number one, public hearing, alcohol beverage license. Uh, consider approval of one new alcohol beverage license. Uh, Country Boys Cooking 912 LLC, uh, also known as, um, the owner is Mr. Travis Riddle at 3300 Norwich Street. Request to sell beer and wine and consumption on premises. Um, we, we took up this item last time uh, and um, we, uh, we did not make a decision. We gave all the, uh, the, um, the owner and uh, his neighbor uh, time to maybe get together and see if we can come to some type of agreement, whatever. But we are here tonight to, to discuss, it, discuss it as well. So uh, we're gonna open it up again for a public hearing. First of all, is uh, our deputy marshal of our marshal on board? Yes, sir, I'm here. Go ahead and, and, and give a presentation, sir, please. Uh, we were, uh, Mr. Riddle advised uh, filed an application for an alcohol license for his business, Country Boy Cooking. Uh, this is an alcohol beverage license for beer and wine. Uh, this license is for the consumption on premises. A background investigation was conducted with Mr. Riddle. Nothing was found in his background that would prevent him uh, from holding an alcohol license. Uh, and it was submitted uh, or presented to you for your consideration as to whether he should be granted an alcohol license. Thank you, sir. Is our city attorney on, on board? I'm here, yes. Will you give us the, the uh, requirements, the, our ordinance, what it states about alcohol beverage license? As it relates to, to the distance requirements that were being discussed in the last meeting? Yes, sir. The, the City of Brunswick Code of Ordinances, when it's dealing with a uh, license such as this, beer and wine for on-premise consumption, um, it, the state law allows on-premise consumption um, within the distance requirements of churches, uh, school buildings, and other certain buildings. However, it does provide that <clears throat> a city or a county can regulate those um, types of licenses. The City of Brunswick's alcohol ordinance does regulate those types of businesses and states that if a license is within 600 feet of a church, which is what we're talking about tonight, uh, that the city commission has to take into consideration any public comments and, and any detrimental, um, whether, the, whether the license would be detrimental to the church if it was going to make a motion to approve the license. Thank you, sir. Okay, commissioners, anyone would like to uh, make a statement before I open up for a public hearing? Okay. I know there was a number of people who spoke up uh, at our last uh, meeting. Uh, we had some, uh, we tried to do it via chat and we read uh, some of the comments and we also allowed people to speak as well. Uh, we're trying a, new, a little different format uh, tonight in that uh, we opened up uh, people to come forth and speak in person at City Hall, at Old City Hall, uh, of which um, Mayor, uh, excuse me, Mayor Harvey and, and Commissioner Williams are present. So, um, first of all, um, I would like for Mr. Travis Riddle, if he's on board, to, to speak before I open up for public hearing, because he's the owner. Hello? Hey, how you doing? Oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry, my, my link went working. I got you, so I'm ready. Um, so, give me just a second. I, I'm at the courthouse now. Can I come up? They here, but they say work. They just zoom in. If you are in Old City Hall, you can come on up. <laughs> the door, the door is locked down here. Can you get somebody let me in? This is Old City Hall right here, right? Yeah. Can anybody come let me in? Yeah, it's right here. Thank you. Come on, they come together.
Is he here, Matthew? Yeah, he's not sure how he got Okay. Thank you, everybody, for your patience until we uh, get Mr. Riddle here. To, he needs an opportunity to speak. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Riddle. Yeah, sorry about that. My Zoom link wasn't working. I just wanted to get up here. Um, first, I want to apologize for uh, holding y'all up. But um, first, I wrote down what I want to say this time. So not for, I just want to say good evening to the mayor, the board of commission, the community of Brunswick, to the ones that are supporting me and the ones that are opposing me. I want to first apologize to the community of Brunswick for bringing y'all into a situation where it seemed that we are divided. From the beginning, from the beginning, um, from the beginning, when I first brought my vision back home to Brunswick, one of the first people I had the pl pleasure of meeting with was Pastor Hall of Hall Temple. <laughs> Pastor Hall and the whole family were very open to my vision and understanding that the business would bring jobs and better opportunities to, to, to the community. Pastor Hall was a community pastor and what he taught us a man or a woman of God should be a fisherman for God. And my business would have been, with or without the beer wine license, would have been his pond. <clears throat> I would like to point out to the board that the Bible also teaches us to be obedient. And since our last meeting, I've been nothing but obedient. Since the last meeting, both, both parties was instructed to meet and come to an agreement where both body, parties could coexist in the same community. I reached out to Pastor Hall and First Lady Lewis three times, twice by text, which all y'all were tagged into and never got no response. I was instructed to reach out, reach out by phone call, not by text, and I did that as well. That phone call was ended because I got hung up on. Um, I also want to mention, since the church seemed to be the biggest thing opposing what I'm doing, if you look at Isaiah 1, chapter 18, it says, come and let us reach let us reason together. And if you skip down to verse 20, it say, but if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured, be devoured by the sword, for yet the Lord has spoken. But three times I reached out, and three times they refused to speak with me. I was obedient, I did what you asked me to do, I asked what my community to do. Right now I was prepared to be on Zoom, I got about 150 people at my, at my location right now, ready to go on Zoom saying they have support of what I'm doing. I also have a petition with over 300 signatures signed, as well as 250 on Facebook. If I was at my location now, I would have showed the camera, you got kids, old folks, young folks, white folks, black folks, all a fellowship, and signed an agreement that they are in favor of what we're doing as a community. Um, I don't want to upset nobody, so I'm keep my conversation short. 
I just asked the community, I mean, ask the, the board, the mayor and the board and commission to take in consideration that I did everything y'all asked me to do to reconcile the situation and come to y'all as a united front versus two parties arguing about the same territory. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm definitely, I spoke with both uh, Pastor uh, Lewis and Mother Lewis and asked them, what could I do to make sure that we could coexist? I offered not to sell beer and wine during church hours, as well as not putting any advertising for beer and wine for my business, which both of those would affect my business, but I'm okay with that as long as I get along with my neighbor. So at this time, I just want to say, um, again, I apologize for being late. Thank you for your consideration. And I ask that if anybody have any doubt about what my business will do, that the mayor and the board of commission do grant me my license. And if, it, if I don't do what I say I would do, at the beginning of the year, I'll be back before y'all again where y'all can deny it because I didn't keep my word on my behalf. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Riddle. Thank you for, for uh, um, your comments. Commissioners, anything you'd like to ask Mr. Riddle? It seems not. So thank you, Mr. Riddle, for your comment. Thank you. All right. I have a question for Deputy Smart. Deputy, Deputy Smart, I've got a question for um, um, Commissioner Williams. Yes, sir. Did, did the request of license re request sale, Sunday sales? Yes, according to Lynn Vealy, he paid for Sunday sales uh, in his uh, payment for his uh, license permit. Okay. All right. So as we move right along, again, this is a public hearing. Uh, we ask people to sign up for, for your comments. We ask for you, since this is a controversial uh, issue, I will ask that you speak no more than, than two minutes. Uh, because I have a long list of people who like to speak. And if you feel that uh, you're going to say the same thing that someone else is going to say, then you can um, just uh, give your time to somebody else and let them speak uh, longer if you would like. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, also, you are directing to the commission and not to your audience. The audience, uh, um, you know, so direct your comments to the commission. Uh, via Zoom and via uh, I'm here and Commissioner Williams are here uh, in your presence. Um, so uh, I'd like to open this part of our commission meeting open for a public hearing and that I will entertain anyone who'd like to come forth and speak for or against a grant of this petition. When you step forward, please state your name and your address and then you have two minutes. The floor is now open. My name is Dr. George L. Lewis. I'm the pastor of Greater Hall Temple Church of God in Christ. I live at 2215 Pinewood Drive. Uh, to the, commission, to the uh, mayor, to the members on the commission board, city commission board, to them, I'm grateful to have this opportunity to speak on the behalf of the issue at hand. And at this time, I oppose Mr. Riddle for serving and also selling wine, beer, and wine coolers any alcoholic beverages in the premises next to the church and also in the neighborhood and in the community. Thank you for bless for directly for letting me have these words of comments on the issue at hand. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Lewis. I appreciate that very much. Next person. Good evening to the mayor and to the commissioners. I'm Linda Bobbitt. I represent District 5 on the school board, and I also am a member of Greater Hall's Temple Church of God in Christ. The reason why I stand here today and oppose, to oppose the selling of the beer, wine, to the alcohol license, let me just state it like that. I oppose that because that's so close to our church. I do not oppose Mr. Reynolds' business I think it's a great opportunity. I think it's a great thing for the community that he have the business there. The only thing that I am opposing is him selling the alcohol beverages so close to the church. I had talked to Mr. Reynolds on twice, two occasions. The last occasion didn't go as well as I would have wanted it to go, but we have spoken with him and I want to let the board 
the, the mayor and the board know we did not come to a resolution. So that's why we're here tonight. And I'm asking you to please vote no, because we do not want beer, wine, any alcohol beverages sold that close to our church. Thank you for your time and attention and giving me the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Ms. Bobbitt. Ms. Lewis. Good evening and to the mayor and to the commissioner. My name is Peggy Carroll. I'm a member of Greater Hall Temple. My address is 157 Fairway Oaks Drive. And just let me say that I'm considered as the oldest member, not by age, but by membership. And we've been in that spot over 40 years. And we've had many participants that's been in that particular building. And we've never had to fight this fight because they always respected the church and they didn't do that. We were some of the best uh, supporters to the people that were there. And it's just like saying, I know Mr. Riddle seems to be a wonderful young man. And I listened to him the last time and I was very encouraged about what he's gonna bring to the city. But it seems like the alcohol thing is, is, is kind of gotten in a spot. It's holding, it's holding this there. And with the, what he was saying, he was going to work with Brunswick High and Glen Academy, and he's going to be doing some things. And I just believe that those things with good food, good advertisement, good participation, that the, it will work. And we will be some of the best advertisement that he could get because we would put it out that he's got good food, good whatever. But I just think that it can be done without that because it's like us sitting up on our property, a Bible study. And we're having Bible study of preaching while people are going in his business. He wouldn't want that. And I just, I know he said he met a, a Pastor Hall. I know Pastor Hall. He would have fought to the last before he would agree to that. He would oppose. And I know if anybody know him, I know him. I've been, like I said, he's been my pastor since he was, uh, since I was 14 years old. I'm 70 years old now. So I know him. He would not have gone with that. So I oppose and I thank you for listening. Thank you, Ms. Carroll. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, my name is Brian Edwards, live at uh, 118 King Cotton Road. And I oppose um, the selling of the alcohol merely because um, that will set a standard in the city that I don't think we would like to have. Um, as it was read earlier, the city ordinance, the city ordinance, states the, the distance with 600 feet. Um, I understand that that's not a state ordinance and the state is the governing board for the alcohol's license. But at the same time, we don't want, we don't want places to sell alcohol next to our schools where I am an educator in this system. We don't want them next to other churches. This, it's a decision for the people to make as far as do you consume alcohol or not, but I do believe that the city can respect the church as a whole. As uh, Mr. Uh, Councilman Williams gave the eloquent prayer, prayers everywhere infused in our government, infused in every type of thing that we do here in Brunswick. And I'm new to the city, been here about two, three years, and that's one of the things that I've noticed is that God is always around in everything we do. Again, it's not saying that Mr. Riddle cannot sell alcohol because that's his choice and he has that freedom under the laws that's in this country. But we just request that he did not sell it next to a church. I think that is the biggest issue. If he was somewhere else, if he was not around a church or school or any other type of establishment that has been set forth by the ordinance, I don't think it'll be an issue. But just because it's a church, I think that that's the deal breaker. Again, I wish him much success. I wish that people like him would come back to Brunswick and support it and build this city to be the great place it possibly can be. So you all have a blessing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your comments. My name is Jerry Turner from the Greater Hall Temple, Church of God in Christ, on um, each and every one of you. Uh, the reason why I don't think he should sell, have a license to serve 
look around our church are causing uh, the things that we're gonna have going on around the church, like New Year's, coming into the New Year. We have children around the church, adults, and we have outside activities for the children. Sometimes we block off the whole section and then his people's gonna be using our parking lot to park their parking lot where they get what they want and then come by to our parking lot, get in their car and leave. And we don't need that right now. Church, we got visitors from other churches gonna be coming down. So that's the reason why we are fighting against him, whoever it is, having license to serve local around our church, causing the peoples around our church that God blessed us with. Pastor Hall is gone now, Pastor Hall, Lord. He is not here to make his comment. So that's why we're here. We making the comments. So what's going around our church Amen. And I think you should have a look at license to do this. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your comments. Mr. Turner. Anyone else speak for or against? Good evening um, to the commission. Thank you for having me, uh, Mayor Harvey, everyone in attendance. My name is Karen Polite. I reside at 2315 Martin Luther King Boulevard. I myself also have, was born and raised here. I've attended Hall Temple on many times, many occasions, whether it was for summer camp or vacation Bible school or uh, field trips once or twice, Miss Big Disney World. As a child uh, with uh, Greater Hall Johnson Temple, of course, at the time my church was Holy Band. And I'm coming here as Travis's realtor his council consultant, a community member of the Brunswick community, city of Brunswick, active on all levels, whether it's academic, community advocacy about a license, right or wrong about trash, whatever the situation may be, I'm gonna be here. And I think this is a landmark opportunity for Brunswick in addition to other things that we have going on here, to come together and link up, and we need this commission to help us do that, to show that we can coexist. I do think that Travis is very responsible. I've been a part of eight real estate transactions with him, and he's very young, very young, but he has a very wise mentality. And his goal is to service Brunswick and the community and also be respectable. I stay on top of him. I counsel him to make sure he be a good steward and a good neighbor. And I wouldn't put my name as if everybody else put their name behind Greater Hall. I wouldn't put my name because that's all I have is my name behind anyone that I didn't think would be a good steward. And I ask and hope and pray that they can come to a resolution I've seen the last business and was a marketing consultant for the last business that was there that did not or was not successful. I don't wanna see that. We need to see more minority businesses and yes, we, he doesn't have to sell alcohol. It's a part of his business plan. So with that being said, we hope that the council will use discretion, look at what has been done previously within the city. Yes, sir. With other businesses that have applied that have been in close proximity to churches and do and give them the same consideration uh, to Mr. Riddle that was given to them. Thank you, Mr. Thank Light. You. you went over your time, but that's okay. Um, Commissioners, yes, my name is May Wilkerson. I live 2111 Ellis Street, Brunswick, Georgia. I've been a member of Greater House Temple for 47 years. And um, if we're going to do the right thing, as I heard him say it earlier, the right thing would be that you sell your food and let the alcohol go because there are children and there are adults around that. In other words, in Proverbs 20 and 1, he said, 
or wine is a mark, strong drinks is rages, and he that does it is not wise. Uh, when I was a young lady, I tried to drink and drive. <laughs> and I ran into fences, thought I was going down the highway. So to me, I think it's a dangerous situation. And I love the young man, don't know him, but I, I don't think alcohol should be a factor. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Wilkinson, for your comments. I'd like to say good evening to the mayor and uh, commissioner. My name is Glenn King. I'm a deacon at Greater Hall Temple, Church of God in Christ. I'm one of the newly appointed trustees at the church. We've had quite a few meetings uh, concerning this. And Mr. Ridley, I- You're speaking to me, sir. Don't. Okay, I'm trying to. Mr. Ridley, I appreciate what he's trying to do in Brunswick, bringing the business. Um, but an ordinance has been set in Brunswick. No licenses within 600 feet. And I, I really don't understand why we have to fight against this if it says within 600 feet. Um, I'm here to say that I oppose the selling of beer and wine and excuse me. And I just wanna say that even though I, Mr. Riddle is, if I'm not mistaken, he can correct me that he's counting on 20% of its business depending on the wine and liquor, wine and beer cores, whatever. But anyway, you know, if I just want to say to him, if he trusts in God, that 20% could be made up without the selling of those beverages. I just want to just oppose to the selling of those beverages. Thank you, Mr. King, for your comments. Anyone else to speak for or against the granting of this petition? Please step forward, state your name and your address, and you have two minutes. Yes, my name is uh, David Wood. I live at 2803 Cottage Park Drive, Brunswick, Georgia. Uh, I listened at what he had to say, and he has some good points. But also, this is God's house, and we should respect God's house. I oppose uh, the alcoholic beverages license. I think the Lord will bless him without having the alcoholic license. And uh, we have to understand that we got to respect God. We can talk about the world, and we can talk about the spiritual side of it. And the spiritual side of it says that we should honor God and do what's right. And he can get by without selling alcoholic beverages in his business. And I think he'll be able to prosper. But I oppose. Thank you, sir. Mr. Wood. Good afternoon, my name is Thea Brooks. My address is 2325 Woodland Way. I'm here um, actually in favor of Mr. Riddle. I know Mr. Lewis, um, I used to work with him. He's a great person. Um, and I also know of Ms. Bobbitt and a lot of the members from Greater Hall Temple. I also went there um, when it was Johnson Temple as a child. Um, uh, Travis is a very well-known and respected young man of our community. He has supported my family through the situation with the mod since day one. Um, Travis is doing a phenomenal job. He has a group of people, like he said, almost 200 people at his establishment now, um, just outside socializing, eating. 
I understand about the beer and the wine, but as the other person said over here that um, we are all God's children. So we should all be able to come together and come to some kind of conclusion. I know it says that his alcohol license, he applied on Sundays to sell alcohol, but he said he has also agreed that that is going to interfere with what they have going on on Sundays that he won't. So I think that we should be able to come to some kind of agreement where it works out for everybody. We've seen many businesses there that did not make it. They all sold food and they did not make it. So thank you for my two minutes, but I hope you guys do go in his favor. Thank you, Ms. Brooks. Good evening, Mayor and uh, the Board of Commissions. My name is Deborah Edwards. I am a member of Greater Hall Temple. My address is 2219 Pinewood Drive. And I like to say that I am not in favor of the sale of alcoholic beverages. I've heard what everyone else has said, but the fact yet remains, there is an ordinance in place. And if we're gonna come confined to that ordinance with every other thing. The word of God tells us obey the laws of the land. So if we're going to obey the laws of the land by anything else, why can't we obey the laws of the land regarding this? Have nothing against Mr. Riddle, never met him before. But I just want him to know that we are not against you having a business. We are pro black business but we don't want to do anything that will not bring a good stance. I've never heard of alcohol bringing a good stance in anyone's life. I've never drank, never had a desire to drink, but I've had friends, family and loved ones that many days, once they came to themselves, they wish they had never taken a drink. So again, I oppose the opportunity for him to have license to sell alcoholic beverages near the church. Thank you for your time and your attention. Thank you, Ms. Edwards, for your comment. The floor is still open for anyone who would like to speak for or against the granting of this petition, the ones who are in, ten in attendance. Um, I have a lot of names here who are signed up to speak, but if you like to uh, yield your time to someone else, you can come say that if you like to, or uh, we can just move right along. No, sir, you cannot. So, um, is, the, is the city clerk on, on board, I imagine? I am mayor. Can you tell me, uh, can you read some of the, the uh, um, people who are, on, who are on Zoom who are for or against the granting of this petition, please? Okay. Um, we have Jerome Harris. He's in favor. Tamika Sorrells. She just had a statement. She didn't say whether she was in favor or not. Linda Mit Mitzi, oppose. Most of them are just statements. Not in, in favor or against? Yeah, um, Chris, um, Christian Gorey, she's in favor. Jerome Harris, in favor. And Samantha, she, she's in favor. She stated it twice. Samantha Gorey, or what? Yes. And that's all I have so far. Okay, can you uh, open up the question that someone put forth? Question. An ordinance from Jeff, an ordinance exists for a reason. The elected officials have duly considered the matter, voted on and approved the ordinance as written, 
If the city commission was to approve an alcohol license under 200 feet, would make a mockery of the ordinance and this very city commission. That was a statement. Uh, the other statements uh, um, that were made, uh, they are, are they lengthy or can you? Okay, one just entered one, um, uh, Elliot. The only thing regulating this decision is commission consideration. Absolutely zero local ordinance prevents this establishment from opening as desired. Read the ordinance again. Okay. That's it. That was all? Yes. Okay. Who sent that? Can... Elliot. He just sent it at 641. No last name. Thank you. Mm hmm Okay. Mayor, would you like me to read the relevant ordinance section into the record or? Yes, you can, please. Okay. <clears throat> no new license shall issue or new location be approved for retail sale of any alcoholic beverage for consumption on premise without consideration by the city commission of the proximity of the location proposed for the establishment to any nearby school, college, church or residences. If any school, college, church or residence is located within 600 feet of the main entrance to the proposed licensed premises, then any motion to approve the location must be accompanied by a statement substantially to the effect that such proximity has been considered and it is the commission's finding that the proximity does not cause the establishment of the licensed premises as proposed to be harmful to the welfare of the community are otherwise unsuitable for the location. Okay, Mr. City Attorney, now can you break that down and lay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, sure. It, it basically means that it, on premise location, um, prior to an approval by the City Commission, you have to make a statement that you've taken into consideration where the location is, if it's within 600 feet of a church, school, or residence and that it's the city commission's decision that it would not negatively impact the welfare uh, or otherwise be unsuitable for the location. Okay. Thank you. All right. Commissioners, as we have dealt with this over the last two weeks, uh, and um, as Mr. Riddle did uh, mention that I did ask him to, uh, and also, um, uh, Pastor Lewis to get together, or the parties to get together to see if we can come to some type of uh, conclusion, resolution, um, some type of a compromise or whatever with this so people can be able to get along just fine. I also made a statement that um, a decision will be made by this board, by this commission, uh, and uh, that we will not just kick the can down the road anymore, any longer. Uh, so uh, with all of that, uh, before I, I ask for a motion Commissioner, is there anything that you would like to say? Commissioner, anything you'd like to say before I ask for a motion? Wow, silence. <laughs> silence? <laughs> you can see my face now on this mask. <laughs> okay, uh, that's fine. Um, commissioners, I, I, I can ask for individual vote and ask you to actually uh, make a statement when you give your vote, if you like to, you don't have to, it's, it's not, it's not uh, required. So uh, before I, uh, well, I'd like to now entertain a motion to, uh, for the granting or denial of this petition. I need a motion to either grant the petition or deny the petition. I'll just make a motion then. So that we, okay. yeah. Yeah. Uh, we uh, 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 for which one? Provident motion. I need a second for the granting of this alcohol beverage license. Couldn't hear the motion. Excuse me? Could not hear the motion. Oh, did you not hear the motion? Not hear the okay. motion. 
the next agenda. This is all. Go ahead again, uh, okay. Mr. Williams. I motion to approve the uh, alcohol license for Country Boy Cooking 912 LLC. It, since there's a motion to approve that's been made, it needs to be accompanied um, by a statement that the city commission has taken all of the, the variables into consideration and that they believe that it should be approved. That's the okay. ordinance requirement. Before it's even seconded or yes. voted on? Yes. Oh, Commissioner Williams, uh, okay. you know, just let's, to make it in that, uh, that. Let's go, buddy. let's try this again. Okay. All right, so we can move this along. I'll make a motion to approve um, the license for Country Boy LLC cooking, I guess it's Country Boy cooking 912 LLC with the understanding that we did take into consideration all the aspects and um, distances and everything that was considered. Okay, I got a motion on the floor. Did anybody hear the motion? Everybody hear the motion? I heard it. Okay. I heard it. Yes. I heard it. Okay. I need a second. Mayor, if there's no second, um, the motion failed. I know that, um, when they, I'm sorry, but yeah, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. It seems that we, ha we don't have a second on to that motion, so that motion fails. Uh, that was a motion to approve the, the um, beverage I'll, license. I'll make a motion again, Mr. Mayor. I'll make a motion to deny Country Boy Cooking 912 LLC alcohol license. We have a motion on the floor to deny um, the alcohol beverage license to Country Boy Cooking 912 LLC. Do I have Do I have a second? I I will second, Commissioner Martin, Mayor Pro Tem. We have a second from uh, Commissioner Martin. Okay. Um, as I said, it's a motion been properly motion second for to deny the alcohol beverage license to Country Boy Cooking. 912 LLC. Are there any further discussion? The only the only point I would say is 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 just the distance requirement. I met with Mr. Riddle. Um, I love his enthusiasm. I think he's got a great business plan. His heart is in the community. I think he will still do an excellent job in providing a great restaurant and a place for people to socialize and enjoy uh, not only eating, but uh, the company of others. However, I think the overwhelming uh, opposition we need to listen to. And secondly, we have ordinances for a reason. And I think that if we set a precedence at this point, we open up uh, a, a whole nother can of worms. Okay, any further comments? Mr. Mayor, let me say this. While, while I agree with Commissioner um, Martin, we've, we've set precedences <laughs> in this community and in this city in other areas where we ha we've had these same issues. Uh, again, you know, I, 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 you know I, I, my, my position is this. I'm a pastor and I understand everything that the church is saying, I understand everything that, that they're, they're fighting against. I understand, I understand all that. And at the same time, I understand Mr. Riddle, because I'm a businessman. I, I, I have a business, I do business. And it's, you know, I don't know why, and I, and I, and I said this, and we, had, we did this even with the uh, planning commission, planning and zoning commission, because a lot of this stuff comes to the commission and we have to make this tough decision that ain't always, it ain't always pretty. It ain't always, you know, um, 
but we took on this job. We took on this task, and we said that we would do what was right for. Uh -huh. So again, I, I appreciate all of you, uh, you know, that, that come out, that came out, speaking out. Uh, you know, but at the same time, I pray and I trust that we don't divide this community based on one issue. And that you know, and I trust and I hope that even you know, all of us support Mr. Riddle in his business because. Uh, like someone else said, there's been a lot of businesses in that location. For whatever reason, they failed. So I, I pray and I trust that that not only uh, the members of Hall Temple, not only the members of, but every member of this community will go out and show Mr. Riddle our support. We believe in what he's standing for, what he's bringing to this community, then let's support him. I, I don't want to see years from now we got somebody else in that location trying to say you know let's do the same thing so again that that's my three cent worth or whatever it's worth and we'll move forward thank you uh, commissioner williams anyone else want to comment before i ask for the vote this is commissioner harrison and and i was going to keep my silence but i've i've, I've garnered everything that everybody has said i I know each person um, to a certain extent that has commented. I've read the comments in the uh, chat boxes. I understand everybody's position. I understand the church's position. I understand Mr. Riddle's position. Um, uh, the ordinance is as it speaks. Um, we have had consideration of, of another establishment um, along these same lines. And while we did, uh, go in favor uh, with that establishment, that establishment had some other uh, factors that came into play. And that was that the entire community and the churches that, that were uh, outside of that 600 feet distance uh, came in and spoke on their behalf. We have a community that is standing for themselves. We have a church that has been long existing uh, in that location for many, many years. Um, and they are speaking out against this. Um, I would even go further to say, if it were uh, First Baptist or one of the other churches, would we be here? Would we be at this point? Uh, don't think that we would, because just like we had on the south end of Brunswick, and that community came out because they did not want hand in hand to build a shelter, well, not a shelter, but housing for homeless people or even those that were not homeless that were trying to find some temporary homing or, or potentially a permanent homing, homing um, or residency. Uh, that entire community came out and we listened at that community and we did not move forward with granting that request. And so the precedent has been set by this commission is that we do listen at the community and we are charged with weighing the best interest of the community. Everybody's not gonna agree with the decision that we make and we can't please everybody. But one thing we have established in this community as a, commi as a commission is that we will take everybody's interests at heart and we will listen. But at the end, we've got to vote our conscience and our seat. And so that's what I will be doing tonight. Um, I have listened at everyone who's in the building. I've listened and I've read the comments on Zoom. I've gotten emails, I've gotten texts. So I am weighing the interest of the entire community. Um, I've spoken with uh, Mr. Riddles, have visited the place, talked to him often, and I tried to confer with him. And I think that he's going to be an awesome entrepreneur at that location. Um, at some point, my hope is that they will be able to come together. I don't know how they'll do it. But what we are charged here with tonight is to make a decision on the application 
of this of the granting of this license and we are charged with weighing the interests of the community that has come out and made their stance. That's my two cents. Thank you, Commissioner Harris. Um, uh, again, I say, as I ask for the vote, you can um, uh, dampen your comments if you want to, if you don't have to, or you can speak now for if you have any other comments before I ask for the vote. Okay, it seems like all comments have been spoken. We've heard from uh, the, uh, the people from the public hearing. Um, we've heard from Mr. Riddle. We've heard from Greater Hall Temple uh, Church members as well, uh, Pastor Lewis. Uh, we also heard from, um, uh, we read the chats. We've, we've read uh, all the other comments and the issues, the texts, the, the emails, uh, and everything that was put on Facebook concerning this issue, uh, we have considered them all. Um, so therefore, Ms. City Clerk, will you please call the roll, please? Commissioner Kaysen, how do you vote? I Wait vote to deny. Wait a minute. Before I do that, let me tell you, what's on the floor is a, um, uh, a motion to deny the granting of this alcohol beverage license. Now, um, um, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Kaysen? I vote to deny. Commissioner Harris? I vote to deny. Commissioner Williams? Yes, to deny. Mayor Pro Tem Martin? Yes. Mayor Harvey? Before I vote, I would like to make a comment, um, and I would like to say uh, that uh, we all took in consideration uh, everything that was, that was made uh, to uh, this commission concerning this, and. And I too uh, echo Commissioner Harris' sentiments about uh, this business uh, would be, I think would be profitable uh, and that we have no ill feeling against um, Mr. Riddle uh, and his, his quest to be successful in the place where he's at. Uh, I had hoped that, uh, that neighbor, neighbors would be neighborly <laughs> and that they will be able to, to uh, Coexist and also be profitable as well. Uh, the church in this in this setting been here for years and years, uh, and it would be very wrong for us to uh, to set against that church that's been there for years. However, Mr. Riddle is bringing some new some newness to uh, the city of Brunswick, something that um, uh, progress what we're looking for, and and we re really uh, uh, invite new businesses to come to the city. And we're not trying to discourage anyone to bring a business to the city. I have all that being said, um, I vote to deny as well. So that motion carries that this petition for the sale of alcohol beverage license has been denied. Thank you everybody. And uh, if you wanna leave when, on your way out, please be very uh, quiet, and then we can move on with our rest of our meeting. The motion carries unanimously, so we will continue on. The next item on our agenda is appointments. It's for the advisory committee. Uh, it says Confederate statues and monuments advisory committee. We have nine appointments. Um, we have asked Commissioner Williams to chair that, um, that committee. And Commissioner, what do you, what can you give me what, you, what your thoughts are? Well, at this point, Mr. Mayor, um, I would like to consider uh, us doing similar to what we did when we, um, selected uh, Ms. McDuffie as our city manager and have each one of us to, from the pool of names that we have, select nine names for that pool, submit those to our city clerk uh, no later than Friday, if that's agreeable with everybody, and then have her, once she tallied those numbers up uh, for those individuals, then have have her to contact those individuals and then we get ready to move forward. 
Commissioner William, that, that's a great idea. However, I, you know, I really would like to have thought that um, we would make sure that we have uh, the Daughters of the Confederacy on, this, on that um, board, um, NAACP on that board, the Robert S. Albert um, Foundation on that board. Um, however, but I yield to the, to the will of this commission. Uh, I don't know any, any uh, democratic way to, uh, to select uh, other than if, uh, if you, um, if the commission agreed to do it the way you suggested, that that would means that no one really would know who, who selected who, and it would be uh, very, it it it'd probably be a good a good way to select. What do you think, other commissioners? Any comments? I agree. Let's let's choose your names from the list of people, have them in uh, by the deadline date, and let's keep it moving. Uh, Commissioner Casey, do you have any comment on that, sir? Oh, uh, I, I think that probably it should be turned in to, uh, to our city clerk and to uh, our city manager should be involved in the process okay. of accepting. Uh, okay. Mayor Pro Tem, any comment? Yeah, the, the only comment I have, and I read through all of the uh, letters of intent or interest and any resumes or other information that was uh, provided. There were obviously several people on the list, uh, on the second list that we never received any information for. So I don't know, I don't know what that means if we totally discount those folks and mark them off the list because they didn't provide any further information. Um, you, you mentioned, uh, you know, the Abbott Foundation and a couple of other things, but if, if it's not mentioned in here, how do we know? I don't, I don't know either. You're right. So, I mean, I, I have sort of uh, gone through and of those that we received information from, whether it was a letter and or a letter and a resume, uh, to try to keep it as diverse uh, as possible, but I mean, you know, I would like to keep it diverse, but how do we, how do, how do we actually know? I mean, we received two photographs, so we sort of know uh, those people, but. Well, is it can I understand what you're saying, um, Commissioner, uh, I'm sorry, Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah. And, 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 and surprising to me, I mean, a lot of the people um, from those institutions that um, that's their area of expertise, I, I, they didn't submit anything. So, I mean, you have no control over people saying they want to be a part of something and then actually following up and taking the action to be a part. Exactly. So I think we, we can only uh, deal and consider what, what we've received and uh, what was publicly announced uh, as, as to when to respond and how to respond. So um, unless we change anything related to that, I think that we have to, we have to deal with what's been provided. And I don't, I don't have any problem with uh, submitting uh, non names, excluding, I'm assuming we're excluding Commissioner Williams because he's going to sort of be, be the, 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 the chair, the standing chair, the uh, He's yeah. ex-official. <laughs> yes. Not ex parte, because he is included, but he, That's right. Ex official. Ex That's right. <laughs> so um, in thinking back how we did this um, previously, uh, I mean we we were not stellar in all coming up with the same names. Uh, so, but if each of us submit nine names, right? Yeah. And let's we'll overlap. Let's say one individual, all nine of us vote for that one individual. That yeah. City. If there's no more, nobody else has nine, somebody has eight names, you know, has, you know, four. They're, they're, they're on that committee and, and so forth until you get to nine people. So why, why do you not still just invite the other organizations that, um, 
that have the expertise in this area to also be a part of this. It doesn't take away from the nine people, but I'm saying if you if you're talking about um hearing from 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 those organizations, um well I think they will have about doing a town hall meeting regarding this. Um, why are the why don't why are not these people invited? I mean they can still you can still have your panel but you can still set it up in a manner to have a town hall meeting um and you still hear from um all of these other organizations to me i think that's inviting to allow um all of these other organizations to come in and you will at least hear their voice but, and but when you resume to um another area then those panelists will have that information from the entirety to consider in their deliberating or presenting their recommendation. I would agree. I think there needs to be some sort of standard of order for the meetings. Obviously, if Commissioner Williams going to um, be, be the head um, and be the moderator, uh, but I definitely think that the meetings should be public and uh, they should be announced ahead of time and anybody that wants to go should be able to go and listen and that there should be a time period in which comments can be made, um, publics can be heard. Um, but I, I think, Commissioner Harris, if I heard you correctly, we, we stick with what's in front of us as to who's responded in order to, to try to put some names forward. Right, right, because we, we asked these people to do this, we gave them a deadline at the last meeting and they did it. Um, but it does not stop us from hearing from the, the at-large community. Commissioner Williams, I think you were about to say something. That, I, I agree totally with that. Um, when we do the public hearings and all those things, the NAACP, the uh, Daughters of the Confederate, whoever, whatever organization that might wanna come and, and present before this panel can do that. And then, you know, we take all those things into consideration and they make a recommendation. I bring the recommendation back to the commission and we go from there. Okay. Now, add it under, under, under your belt, commission. So uh, can you please, uh, Mayor Clark, reiterate how we have left this as to what our responsibilities are as a commission? Uh, did you call me Mayor Clark? <laughs> She said, Mayor Clerk. Mayor Clerk. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, Madam <laughs> Clerk. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. Well, we were each to submit uh, names of five candidates we wanted to put forth by nine. Friday nine. Of this week by five o'clock in the afternoon or. Okay, which day did y'all decide to have the name submitted? There are nine names. It said Friday, but we haven't, I don't think we agreed to that. But I Well, I mean, if we did it this Friday and there, and there were, let's just say, six people that several of us had, had chosen, but then there's a scattering of other people, maybe it gives us an opportunity to have those names thrown back out there and finish up the final four, three names or whatever's still hanging out there. If, if you were to submit, not each submit nine names, numbering them one through nine, at the end of it, tallying up each of them, giving a point, you know, or nine through one, however you wanted to do it, there would be enough of a consensus at the end of it if you added up everybody's points to set a nine person. Um, so panel. we have to prioritize it, who our number one is, number two, number three, and so on? Yes. Okay. Okay. And, and I would reiterate what Commissioner Harris said earlier. I think that is how you rectify any uh, issue of people maybe being not represented is allow it to be open to all. Um, and, and, you know, the, it'll be the first, at the first meeting of this committee to decide how the, you know, set bylaws procedurally, how they want to meet, who they want to open it up to, and then how the invites would go out. I will also ask that uh, the ones who, who was not selected to be on, um, to be on a subcommittee or whatever uh, during, that, uh, during the time or as we go through this process, 
that uh, they are not forgotten, that, that we, we appreciate them um, submitting uh, and wanting to get involved with, with this, this issue. So therefore, you know, uh, we were keeping that name on the list and they list, their name can be so maybe on the subcommittee or, or, or on something dealing with, uh, as we move forward with uh, where, we, where we're trying to go with this, this, this ordinance. Any other questions, comments? Thanks for that, honey. Okay. Um, so we are going to, um, uh, go by uh, our point system uh, in each in each commissioner the mayor will submit nine names uh, rank them from one through nine to our city clerk no later than friday um and uh from there they will be selected so and also our city clerk will you please um uh send that list of who has been selected uh, to all the commissioners so we can um Make sure that board stands up for their next meeting. Will do. Okay. And the city manager. Excuse me? Yeah, and the city and manager. And the city manager. Yes. I'm sorry. My, my and Mr. Mayor, can we uh, get our list in by noon on Friday? Yes, yes, please, by all means. Yeah, I would like to get it so, so the city, so the city manager and the city clerk can get this to us before the end close of business on Friday. I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, the um, uh, the news the press would like to have to know who it is too as well. So I may give them an opportunity. I'm pretty sure they'd be calling you, Miss City Manager and Miss Miss City Clerk, uh, for uh, the tally as well. So well, please get it to us as, as as you can. And can I just ask one question for further clarification? Because we did sort of talk about this, but I would like it to to be determined of the names that we had on our list. Sure. Um, the ones that were highlighted were the ones that Correct. sent in either a letter and or a resume. Right. Are those the only ones we're considering? The other people that are listed who never sent in a letter, never sent in anything other than, I don't even know how their names got on the list. Can we have some clarification on that, please? My thought was just take the names that are highlighted on the list that have sent in, that sent in their resume or emails to Naomi or their letter of interest into Naomi. Okay. Okay, the rest of them, you know, I mean, they- They, they, they had the same opportunity. They're, they're, they've eliminated themselves by not moving forward with the process. Okay, thank you. Okay, are we all in agreement? All right, we're moving right along to item number three, item to consider for approval. Consider approval of July 1st, 2020 regular scheduled meeting minutes. Um, our minutes have been attached to our, in our booklet take a second or two to peruse and I will entertain a motion, please. Motion to approve as presented. All second. second. Motion, probably motion second for the approval of our minutes of July 1st, 2020. Are any further questions? Hearing the all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed at the same right. It appears the ayes have it. That motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Um, item number four, city attorney item. Consider for approval the amended mutual aid agreement between the city of Brunswick and Glen County. Um, city attorney, you have the floor, sir. Yes, good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, the, what you have before you is a mutual aid agreement that has been <clears throat> um, presented to you in the past uh, at the time, it was between the city, the county, and the sheriff's department. Uh, after reviewing it and discussions with the county, um, it has been amended to only include the city of Brunswick and Glen County. Um, it is a mutual aid agreement between the police departments that would essentially provide the ability for the city or the county to contact the other 
law enforcement agency in a time of need to help with, uh, you know, supporting law enforcement services. Um, it allows for if our chief needed something, if an emergency was going on downtown, uh, he would be able to contact the chief of the county police department, request mutual aid, and it sets forth how, you know, the parameters of how an officer who has been requested from one law enforcement agency to the other, how they would be treated, uh, whether they would be, you know, then become an agency, uh, excuse me, an agent of the other law enforcement agency. Um, it's a mutual aid agreement pursuant to the, obviously the Georgia state code allowing um, for these types of agreements to be entered into. Uh, we are not required to uh, pay any compensation, neither is the county in the event that we do request mutual aid. Um, there's a privileges, immunities, and exception so that if, you know, if the county requests the city's help and the city law enforcement agency uh, is providing that help, they become, you know, part of that county police department to the extent that they would be, um, defended by the county if something were to take place. Same thing goes on and vice versa. Um, I've spoken to uh, the county attorney um, and have com confirmed that this mutual aid agreement will also be taken up by the county commission, I believe at tomorrow night's meeting. I think uh, the city manager has also spoken to the county administrator and, and received the same confirmation but i i have confirmed through the county attorney's office it will be placed on the um, county agenda tomorrow night uh, this is a request made by the chief of our police department that we look into something like this as we began meetings during the arbory case uh, with the protests and uh, the other events that took place you know obviously thankfully were very peaceful and well received but in the event something like that was going on, this agreement would allow uh, a mutually beneficial um, law enforcement uh, support from one jurisdiction to the other. Um, I, ha I have a couple of questions, if I may. Sure. Um, I think it's on page two uh, when it talks about definitions and it mentions natural disasters um, and amongst other things. Can mm -hmm. you explain how the mutual aid agreement would come into play any differently than our current situation in the event of a hurricane or a tropical storm? I mean, it it's, for example, I guess if a tornado went through North Glen and they were in desperate need of, of um, they already had their police force was, was running thin, they are in desperate need of additional law enforcement officers to help with, you know, responding to calls, directing traffic, whatever else might be. Um, so I think that that would be something is that kind of the question? I think it would be the same sense if, if there was a a natural disaster only affecting one jurisdiction, it's just very unlikely that there would be a natural disaster that might only affect one jurisdiction in our county. Um, right. If so it was a hurricane. Yes. Um, is, is it standard protocol already that one governmental agency contacts the other governmental agency? Like right now today, if we, if we had this scenario that you're just talking about, it just sort of naturally occurs, so. No, this this would be, so as it would relate, like if, for Irma is a good example, obviously. Uh, the city at that point in time would, the city officers would be op operating as city of Brunswick police officers handling the natural disaster as it impacted the city. The county police officers would be handling it as it impacted the county. In my example, if it was a tornado that only ran through you know, a portion of Glen County and the county made a request to the city, the city police officers would prob would would then become county police officers as they entered into and assisted with the impact of the tornado in the county area. Does okay. that help? Okay. Yeah. And then um, my last question is on page six, um, item 12.2. Can you give us an example of that? Like what, what would be an example of a situation where specialized equipment might be required 
that then leaves a deficit with the other governmental party. Um, I just, I couldn't think of a scenario related to that, but I'm sure there is one. I think it would be like if, if there was some sort of, I mean, I, I guess to try to give it a, a, an example of what we're going through right now, if the city, uh, if the county requested aid from the city as it relates to, I don't know, maybe coronavirus had overwhelmed the county in some sense, uh, and you're looking at an emergency situation, they've requested mutual aid in, in seeking out, maybe the city had a, a vault full of PPE, you know, personal protection equipment. And that is, I mean, we okay. then we then the city then dedicates that to the county's efforts, um, and then we, we, we might be able, yeah. right? And then suddenly, uh, obviously, Corona doesn't know um, jurisdictional limits. It comes into the city. Now the city is put in a, a sort of in a perilous position because we've provided all of our PPE to the county. So then we would turn around and say, you know, wait a minute, we now we're almost left vacant. We need you guys to to support and and scratch us on the back as well. I, okay. But I, I don't see that like a very likely scenario because I do think that the county and city law enforcement agencies for the most part are, are have their, you know, their supplies and I just don't. Okay. Maybe so that, that was, that was helpful to uh, at least have some sort of a scenario to understand how that might transpire. Okay. Thank you. Any other further questions for our city attorney? Is uh, the chief on board? Meaning, is he in support of this, or is he on the meeting tonight? Is he on? Is he online with with us? Oh, I'm not sure. No, he's not. I think he came for us earlier before in a previous meeting. Okay, um, commissioner. He is. He is making this request. I mean, he, he and I have talked extensively about this agreement. I do think he'd like to see it be put in place. Okay. If that's the will of the commission. Mm -hmm. Okay. So commissioners, um, if, if there's no further comment. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the amended mutual aid agreement between the city of Brunswick and Glenn County as presented. Second. Is there probably a motion second for the approval of the mutual aid agreement uh, as amended between the city of Brunswick and uh, Glenn County. Are there any further comments? You're in the I, want make sure, I just want to make sure that this is not going to um, be something that is going to call some additional expense on um on the city and, and i take it that um that our city managers had an opportunity to look at this and if she has i'd like yes city manager you have any comments uh well my only comment is that yes i did look at this agreement and um talk with the chief about it and certainly we we need the backup because you know we they will sometimes need it, and we will sometimes need it. Um, and I think a mutual aid agreement should be between all of our uh, law enforcement personnel. I don't see it being a cost. It specifically says that any cost incurred um, is bare, will be borne by the entity that's making the request. I want to make sure it's not anything hidden. Thank Hopefully you. not. Thank you. Thank you. Further comments? Madam Clerk, call the roll. Commissioner Kaysen? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Williams? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Martin? Yes. Mayor Harvey? Yes. It appears that that motion carries unanimously. Thank you so very much, uh, Mr. City Attorney. Uh, thank you for the due diligence and thank the Chief of Police for for being patient enough for us to get this approved. Um, with I, at item number five, consider for adoption ordinance number 1067, which is our tree ordinance. Yes, um, here again, 
Uh, we just actually uh, had the, I believe the tree board meeting was, gosh, yeah. I think it was last night. Sometimes I can't think, but um, this is the uh, ordinance that was presented at the last city commission meeting for consideration. I believe it has been properly advertised. Uh, I don't know if the city clerk has received any comments. I, I don't believe so. Um, so it's, it's present before you tonight for your approval. Um, I did give the tree board somewhat of an update at the last meeting um, that it would be uh, on the agenda tonight for approval. Uh, I think they're excited that it it's, could potentially become an ordinance and they've already started to move and have discussions as to the second phase of the ordinance, which would be addressing trees on private property and how we can protect those. So with that, all that said, I'd leave it up to the commission if there's any questions or concerns. Questions, concerns, commissioner? I have, I have one question and I, I, I don't know. Um, Section 27 is on the last page, page 13, about the fines and imprisonment. Mm -hmm. Are we going to make sure that we advertise this and, and, and educate the public on what this means and what trees? Because, you know, uh, there, there are properties, I'll say it like that, there are properties in the city that has somewhat abandoned if you if you if you follow where I'm, where I'm going there like where I live there's supposed to be a um, right away between the houses but there's no right away there anymore matter of fact my my clean out for 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 joint water and sewer is in my backyard that's supposedly supposed to be part of a, a, a right away that's no longer in existence that the city or whoever has abandoned so if there's a tree of one of these trees on that property and I cut it, which would be on city property, am I gonna be fined or in prison? I think you'd have to be, well, first, obviously you'd have due process to be able to go through the court system. And I think every case would need to be, you know, given that, uh, uh, that due process, you'd be able to take your have your day in court. You'd also be able to discuss it with the tree board. I mean, they would hear it first. Um, but, you know, that violation section, that section 13 is, is standard language included in most of our other ordinances. It does seem harsh, fine up to a thousand dollars or punishment of a period of up to 60 days in jail. Um, I don't anticipate that being the case. I mean, there may w very well be an intentional uh, removal or um, pruning of a tree where it would be appropriate, of course, but yes, I mean, you'd be afforded due process. And I think that in the a good example of what you just gave that there's going to be an understanding that as we roll out a tree ordinance, there's probably going to be mistakes, honest mistakes. Um, and even though it says any person's violating any provision of this ordinance shall be punished by a combination of a fine up to 1000 or imprisonment, you have to be found guilty first. Um, and even then, I think if it was taken to a court, I think there'd be some leeway by the judge and probably the prosecuting officer to say there might have been extenuating circumstances. Okay, I just want to make sure that we, you know, if, if this is going to be something that we would, would enforce, you know, we have a lot of orders that we don't enforce, but if it's going to be something that we enforce, that we at least educate the public so that they do understand that that is a possibility. Right. Well, I hope to enforce all our ordinances that we have on the books. Um, so uh, thank you for all your comments. Um, but any further comments concerning this? I like to say uh, that uh, the city of Brunswick is a, a tree friendly uh, community. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we take that very seriously. I can remember when uh, um, and Alan Lee were or a high uh, priority list, uh, a non cutting down limb to a priority in the city of Brunswick. Uh, and I think that <laughs> still holds true. Um, so, commissioners, no further questions. I, I've got a question on page three. Uh, it says that uh, we have a city forester or a city arborist. Yes. Who would that be? Hmm. We don't uh, have one. 
we we have been using um oh my gosh his name is going to escape me right now we just discussed him at the last tree board meeting don don gardner yes we've is been using him as, he's retired i thought he's been he's been filling in to help us with uh tree trees that have been in question um ah, shoot i i cannot remember the other name Spratling is gone he's He's gone back to school. You know, he was with the uh, University University of Georgia Extension, but he's uh, he's no longer with us. So we. I know we used. To, I know we used to have one. Our school is that, or is that just volunteer? He, I think, I know he's retired. But Don, I think, has continued serving the role for both the city and the county at the moment. But I can confirm, and I can, uh, I'll talk. Probably, probably need to get that established. Sure. And uh, on page 12, section 27-11, emergency conditions, I think yes. the third line, you've got uh, Glenn CBC, and I think you need to change that to oh, COB. Yep. How did that get in there? Okay, that will be done. I can answer that. <laughs> Good sure. We will take care of that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of questions. Uh, my questions are related to palm trees, specifically because Anybody that's got palm trees, um, if they if they do any sort of maintenance at all, every year you're trimming up your palm trees, you're you're pruning them or trimming them, however you want to say it. You get rid of the fruiting fronds and the dead um, the dead fronds. It's it's a yearly thing, so the caliper of those exceeds. Uh, the, the, the minimum, so has that been thought through? I, you know, that would be more of a question, I think, for the tree board than myself, but okay. I believe that they've taken those into consideration. I know that there's a definition of protected tree um, in the ordinance, uh, and then there's also a discussion of proper pruning techniques and measures. I think that also, that would apply to the city's palm trees, um, since this is only for pro uh, public property at the moment. Right. So, if a pro if a person with palm trees on their private property were pruning them or doing whatever they wanted to with them at the moment, They're fine. there would be no ramification. Right. Um, I think too on page seven, um, item number two. It says upon the submission of an application and notice of proposed tree removal shall be obviously posted on site. I think we should say who is going to post if it's the uh, administrative designated person as the city manager. I think, you know, it just kind of leaves it open. Like who's going to post it. Wouldn't that be the um, public works director? It would probably Rick or well, I know Rick's not the public works director, but Rick Charnock is a is essentially he helps the tree board. He's he's at most meetings, and I would expect that it would be yes, the public works would go out uh, if the tree board receives an application for removal, pruning, alteration, whatever they might be, you know, the application. Um, I think they would be in close contact with the public works department, and that's who would send out uh, a notice. And I think even though the ordinance has not been in place, there has been a one tree, I believe over, oh man, I can't recall the exact location, but they're already working sort of within the, the guidelines to see what can be done for a particular tree. But, but yes, easy I mean, answer would be probably public works. Okay. I but just, we can, we can place a, a, yes, I'm sorry. We can place. Um, something definitive in there. Correct. Okay. I think we, I think we should. And then, um, the whole section 25-5 or 27-5 where it talks about public utility. I mean, most of the public utilities like Georgia Power, let's just say, they use a third party contractor like Esplund to do all their 
tree work, which every, every time that gets started, we, we all get phone calls because it's, it's, I'm sorry, but they're, they're, they're pruning for years uh, ahead so they don't have to come back and do it for years. So it's just, do we have any control or any say over that? Because that was, it was a, that was a long discussion with the tree yeah. board. Um, one of the things, and John Hunter's also helped out with the tree board and, and he and I looked back, they, the franchise agreements that some of these public utilities hold their contracts provide them authority to um, make those cuts, I guess you could say. And there's nothing in our ordinance that could supersede the um, utility agreements that they've already got in place. So in essence, <laughs> the, there's not a whole lot we can do to remove that authority from them to be able to go and protect the quote unquote, protect the utility lines. But it was something that was heavily discussed by the tree board. Um, Did anybody think... contact the city of Savannah um, specifically regarding that? Because uh, on page 10, number two, it says, you, it talks about utility companies um, shall provide written notice to the administrative authority, which is our city manager. Um, in advance of any work, but we don't say like how far in advance, there's no timing. I mean, they could call and say, okay, we're gonna do this today at noon and you have no recourse whatsoever. Uh, I mean, can we put some sort of a, you know, within, within uh, 30 days prior to the commencement of work, we will be given a, a schedule of where they're gonna cut and what they're gonna do. Again, and you can see in that code section, it states unless otherwise set forth in any franchise agreement, but we, I mean, we can add that timeline into that section. Um, it just would be that uh, it, it still would, it would still be superseded by anything in their franchise agreement. Do you, do you, and I've been to some tree board meetings and I know how complicated this gets. I mean, it's, it's, it's far more complicated, I think, than people ever give it credit for when you try I would to, totally agree with that statement. oh my gosh when you come up with a, a tree ordinance so I I commend our tree board um, for all the work that they've been doing I'm sure it is not easy um, but do you know if if Savannah was consulted as far as their tree ordinances downtown and how they worked with the franchise companies for Georgia Power and some of these these other utility companies? I don't know that I don't I mean I know that the I looked at other ordinances I know the tree board consulted many many sources including other cities and, and jurisdictions to try to to put together an appropriate ordinance um, I don't want to say that they 100% uh, considered Savannah's but I I would I think they did. I know I have a copy of it and I'm, I can't recall it directly off the top of my head now, but I believe it was actually provided by either um, John Hunter or a, a tree board member. I cannot recall exactly that. Okay. But yeah, I mean, if, if we could at least hold the utility companies feet to the fire to some degree with advance notice of, uh, you know, when and where they're going to be doing work, it, it might at least be helpful to know. I can include that in there. And we can Ad idea. advance yeah. written notice, or 30 can, days written notice. Yeah. We can send letters to the utility companies letting them know we have a tree ordinance in place and that we would like for them to give proper notification in regards to any work that they do on the city right of ways. Yeah, because the minute that work is started, um, in particular in the South End, uh, I get phone calls. Like, it just, you know, the, <laughs> the way they do it. Well, the thing is, they will be brutal as long as you let them. So yes. we'll try and make sure that they know we don't want them to do that. But yes. again, it's very hard to enforce. But I think um, sending them something to let them know that, you know, we have something in place and that we are concerned with how they up the trees would yeah and i think to help. the degree that we can we can stay we are um 
a USA tree city and you know that has certain meaning and certain criteria that we have to adhere to so you know it yeah it, I just feel like we need to have some some teeth in in the ordinance especially when it comes to third party franchises that you know that are contracted with the utility companies that's a good idea and something that I remember is is they decided they be in Georgia Power, I think, to uh, use chemicals over on King's Way. And that's something else that perhaps we need to consider. Do we need to talk about the use of uh, chemicals in, in this? We should certainly have notification before any chemicals are used uh, on the city right of way. Ryan. Yes. Is it true or not true that the utility companies lease those properties from the, um, from the city? They lease the right away? Through their franchise agreement, I wouldn't necessarily call it a lease, but through the franchise agreement, it's essentially, yeah, they're, they're, they're being granted easements over our properties. And, and that's why there was kind of a, quite a, a back and forth of, um, um, you know, with the, the, the Wi-Fi and everything that's being put forth in the ordinances that we've passed recently, I think in October of last year, is that I think there's a differing of opinions between a utility company and a muni municipality as to whose property that really is. But at the end of the day, at City of Brunswick right-of-way, they have a franchise agreement over it to, to be in that area. Um, in other words, if their poles or whatever light, whatever, is obstructed by some object or whatever it is, they, they do have the right to remove it or do they not have that right? No, they do. I mean, I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I understand what you're asking. Yes, they do. I mean, they have been granted greater powers, you know, by the state through their franchise agreements to be able to, you know, and just like you're saying, in the event that a tree limb breaks or a tree limb becomes too close that might compromise the system, they're, they're granted that, that authority to come through. And I think, you know, there, unfortunately, there's not much of a delicate compromise when they're doing preventative maintenance and they would come through and, you know, preventative maintenance to me is them probably looking at it and going, make cuts to trees so that we don't have to come back in 10 years. But yes, they have the right and authority to do that. So that, that's what I'm kind of trying to figure out. Do, are they, they're, I guess they're really not obligated then to us to say we're coming to Brunswick on next week and we're going to cut trees along Highway 17. I'd have to look at their, the franchise agreement to really govern. I would hope that, you know, similar to what the city manager said, that if we sent them letters saying we've enacted a tree ordinance and we would greatly appreciate your cooperation, that we maybe would have them work along with us. But, you know, we all know that that might not always be the case. Yes, we can contact the local representatives, of course. Sure. Again, there may not be much teeth behind what we do, but um, I think we, you know, in the spirit of trying to cooperate with them, you know, ask for notification and also ask for um, any, you know, knowledge of chemicals or anything like that that's to be used on our right-of-ways. I, I would think that, yeah, when it comes to chemicals, especially um, that we would need notification because of any, any chemicals that's coming from the tree that gets into our water system or any, anything like that, we would definitely want to be aware of what, what, what they're putting on the trees uh, if they're using chemicals. Yeah, I would, I would think maybe if we um, had a conversation with Diallo Cartwright, who is our um, Georgia Power community yeah. uh, activist or however you want to say it, that you know he, he might be able to lead us in the right direction and how to accomplish what we what would we would like to accomplish in concert with Georgia Power. Is it, is it just Georgia Power or is it the cable companies and, and other other utilities? I, Usually it's just Georgia Power or the power companies that have the power lines and the others are 
on their lines and things. So I think Georgia Power is probably the, the biggest one. I don't know of any others that come out and cut the trees like they do. Um, the other question I have is, uh, is this ordinance available currently in the draft form on the city's website for people to review and make any comments? And if not, can we make sure it is? I mean, it's been advertised in the same sense that we've um, advertised other ordinances, but this is a since this is the second reading, you know, I was anticipating the potential to have approval. Um, I, I don't know if the city clerk received any comments after it was advertised. Uh, no, um, I did not receive any comments. Okay. But has it, has it been posted? Has it been accessible to the public? Yes, um, it's on the attachments on the agenda, on the agenda okay. items, yes. Okay. And it, you know, it's also been, heavily scrutinized yeah. in tree board meetings as well. I'm sure. Thank you. Okay. Any further comments, Commissioner? Mr. Mayor, I just want to make this comment. I want to say thank you to the entire tree board, including Ms. Bonetta Kitts, I think who was the chairman and all of those who took the time to work through this ordinance. And I know it took a great deal of time and all those other things that, that go with trying to put something of this magnitude together. So Thank you all very much for your, your hard work and, and making this happen for the city of Brunswick. Yes, I'd like to echo that. They did an awesome job. Thank you all so much for your due diligence. Yes. And, and I would again reiterate, like I did at the last meeting, they put this ordinance together in a manner that was almost ready to just kind of fire through. And then we worked through that draft. So they did a tremendous amount of work prior to even me being involved in it. So it was a great collaborative effort. Well, I'd, I'd like to make a motion then um, with, with accolades to our tree board and all the hard work and effort that they've been through to adopt ordinance number 1067, which is the tree ordinance. Second. Okay, then probably most a second for the adoption of, of uh, ordinance number 1067, which is our tree ordinance. Uh, any further comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed have the same right. The ayes have it. Thank you so very much. Okay, okay now we had item number 5A, which is consider approval of the compensation agreement between the city of Brunswick and Gallagher Marine System LLC. Mr. City Attorney, I think this is on your item as well. Yes, sir. Um, if you all recall, uh, several meetings ago, we brought forth a, um, a license agreement for Gallagher Marine Systems to be using Sydney Lanier Park. Uh, at that time, they had been using the park for several months. Uh, they were utilizing the dock and um, the boat ramp to launch boats and use it for personnel transportation. They also had some storage containers in the parking lot. Since that time, we've entered into some negotiations with them. Um, and part of the negotiations revolved around the public, public's access to City Lanier Park, which we, of course, as a city, could not offer an exclusive use of that park. Um, I think through that, Gallagher began to look around and secured a different um, boat ramp and dock space, maybe not a boat ramp, I'm sorry, dock space um, on the other side of Mayor's Point. Um, but when they did come back and say, hey, you know, there's no, we no longer have a need for City Lanier, um, we entered back into negotiations and this is the compensation agreement that they've agreed to. Uh, it is, if you can see that it's already been signed by uh, the Golden Rays uh, representation. Um, it would be a lump sum payment of $75,000 as full compensation for the use of the park and its improvements for the time period beginning on the 8th of September 2019 and terminating as evidenced by the agreement June 30th, 2020. From my understanding, the last day that they had occupied or utilized 
Sydney and Lanier Park for their operations was June, I think, 28, 2020. Um, but this agreement essentially states that the use terminated on June 30th and that they are sort of reimbursing, in a way, the city uh, for the use of the park to a tune of $75,000 lump sum payment. And if you recall the, the original, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to add that the only thing um, I was going to add was that Garo and I, um, he went down and looked at everything at the park and it's pretty much, you know, left as it was with normal wear and tear. Um, they also agreed to leave the porta potties there until we got the restrooms in because they felt like the public was using them and they were necessary. So they left sanitizing stations and restrooms there and they will, um, they agree to move those once we um, get our restroom facilities in place. But um, they were very amenable to our request and certainly um, I think it worked out very well for everyone. And they have so vacated the area. We're, we're gonna, we're still paying for two of those uh, toilets and they were paying for two or how are you doing that? I don't know that arrangement. I was not privy to that arrangement. We, we had two out there and then they, they added, uh, added two more. I was wondering that the other day because I've been out there a time or two. And I would say that what Brian's saying about the folks finding another place is, is right. But I think some of their contractors are still using the park and, and they're still using the dock. Uh, so. I have a well, we'll check and see, uh, possibly their contractors, but when we were there, there were no, um, you know, large equipment or trucks or anything out there. Had some uh, large trailers out there every time I've been out there and uh, several logoed trucks out there. Just How long ago was that? During this week, last week, week before. Okay, well, we'll check on that and find my out. Ride, my riding around. Thank you. I want to commend uh, the, the city manager and uh, Gero for uh, going back and talking to Gallagher and uh, uh, getting our mutual aid agreement uh, uh, to uh, a palatable amount that uh, that we are seeing here. Uh, so we thank you so kindly for that. Uh, commissioners, any other comments you'd like to, to make? Also, uh, uh, city attorney, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to leave you out. Yeah. I was going to say thank you to our city attorney. I, I think this is, uh, I mean, in my opinion, better than, than what we, we were anticipating. So I'm, I'm pleased and I'm very much in favor of this. Further comments, questions? I'll make a motion to approve the compensation agreement. Second. Probably motion second for to uh, approval of the compensation agreement between the City of Brooklyn and Gallagher Marine System, LLC. Further comments? Hearing that, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed has the same right. It appears that the ayes have it, but that motion carried. Thank you. All right, we had item number six. Manager item, consider approval of 503 Mansfield loan prepayment. Ms. City Manager. Good evening. Um, this is, and do you all have documents in front of you in regards to the prepayment yes, summary? Yes. Okay, I'm going to pull up my documents. Hold on just a second. Um, the documents that you have in front of you are the information regarding the payoff for the loan. That uh, loan after the 10 years, which would have been October 15, 2019, um, had a prepayment penalty assessed to it that was for um, 1%. And basically, at this point, I have contacted the GMA lease pool personnel, but um, I have not gotten confirmation from SunTrust but the lease pool people with GMA said that the payoff that I was assessing was correct. What the principal owed on the loan to date right now is $420,816.19. And the interest payments that are still due are um, 
54,332. I have contacted SunTrust and asked them to waive the 1% premium, which would be the penalty to pay it off early. Um, what I'd like for the commission to, I guess, consider is the payoff, regardless of whether we have the um, penalty or not. If we, if we don't get them to waive the penalty, then we'll save $50,124 versus the $54,332. Um, if you look at the information, and let me see if I share my screen right now. Let's see if I can do that. Uh, always have, okay. Um, this is the payment schedule and it's got a lot of markings on it. But what I wanted to show, and this is very difficult to read, um, is that the city chose that 1% um, option to prepay, even though in the documents that were presented with the proposal, the city had asked for the penalty to be, um, to not have a penalty for prepayment. So that's um, the reason, if you look right here, it says after the 10th year, the leasee may prepare, prepay the lease at par, or leasee may pre prepay the lease with a prepayment penalty of 1% for the entire term of the lease. And the city at that time chose the 1% premium um, and this could have been done last October, as I said, and then we would have saved approximately $26,000 of interest um, that we already paid to date. But at this point in time, we can go and prepay it, and I am going to ask SunTrust to waive that last penalty amount. It's Truist now, Regina. Well, actually, it's SunTrust Equipment Leasing, and they still go under that name. I don't know. Yes. Uh, I know they're in the process of changing everything over to Truist. Yeah, they. Um, I think the SunTrust leasing, they haven't changed over yet, but I do have a person and I was hoping I could get confirmation from him today, but I was not able to um, get him to finalize that process. And the other thing I was going to say is that um, I will look into, I mean, if you all approve for the prepayment, I will look into it to make sure we won't, where we will get the money from for the prepayment. We'll kind of look at where our budget is and what money we have in reserves at this point. And also make sure that, um, that we don't deplete any of our cash flow by, by doing this, making this payment. But it's the wishes of the commission what we, how we move forward with this. What's the, if we paid it off right now today, what's the total amount? Is that that four, 420,000? Yes, it's 421619. Okay. Mrs. How, how you feel about that? I, 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 um, uh, I'm on agreement that uh, we, we go in and get rid of this uh, already because the more we keep leaving it out there, the more money we are paying. Uh, to carry this note, uh, we are able to to uh, retire this note uh, right now. I, I think we need to go ahead and do it. Uh, I think uh, our city manager will bring it to us, looking for ways to always save us some 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 money, uh, even though it, we may have to tighten our boots for a little bit. But I, I think we should we should be all right. I believe too that uh, with the CARES Act, we're going to get some some money from from the, state, from the federal government as well. And we're looking to try to get some of that money to uh, not be for uh, not necessary because of uh, the COVID-19. Uh, that we're looking to maybe we can use that money for some other um, uh, things too as well. And we're trying to get that put in that bill, the, the new CARES Act as well, new bill they're trying to do, stimulus packages or whatever. So we're trying to look at that. Uh, a lot of cities are having the same issues with uh, depleted uh, funds and whatever. So I'm looking that maybe we can do something with this this here. And our city manager has assured us that that uh, she can find the money so we can pay it. Uh, and then we just new, need to move forward. That's my two cents. Anybody else got any comments? I totally agree with you. Yeah, it just it just really is difficult to look at this whole thing in terms of it occurring in 2009 which the market was already falling. It, we, we, we were already headed into the recession. Um, I don't know. It just, 
<laughs> just kind of makes me mad that I just, I don't know, somehow I feel like the city got taken advantage of. But I, I, I think we need to get the building in use, uh, whether it's rented or the city's using it, but it, right now it's just sitting there and we need to really put some effort or further effort, I'm sure there has been some effort towards um, trying to get some sort of income, lease income coming in. Um, but I think the sooner we can pay this off and get rid of the debt and, and the um, egregious interest rate, we should. I'm in agreement. We've been kicking this can down the road a long time. And now it's time to pick it up and put it in the trash. Just as an update for the use of the building, we are scheduled to have our disaster recovery um, program running out of that building as of August 1st. And okay. we, may, we also have another grant, a financial navigation grant, um, that we may you know, have that program running out of that building as well. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? If not, I entertain a motion, please. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to offer a motion to um, Can't hear you, Doc. Commissioner. I'd like to offer a motion to approve the prepayment option as presented by our city manager. Second. Close a second for the approval of the final three management of home prepayment. Options that we presented by our city manager. Uh, any further questions? Madam Clerk, call the roll for me, please. Commissioner Kaysen? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Williams? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Martin? Yes. Mayor Harvey? Yes. Well, it appears that that, that motion is in approval in the in the approval category. That motion carries unanimously. Thank you so very much. Our last item on our agenda is a uh, discussion. It's on the Mayor Harvey's item, discussion on the mandatory wear of, of face masks. Now, I asked for this um, item to be placed on the agenda for discussion tonight because lately uh, we have seen a, a significant spike in Glen County uh, on the COVID-19 positive cases. Uh, and we have um, we've seen that um, uh, Glen County has become one of the epic centers, a hot spot, so to speak, of um, uh, positive cases. And, and we believe, I believe, that uh, it's probably due to us kind of relaxing our, our posture here. Uh, and um, I think uh, the face masking, washing the hands, and so very helpful for us. Therefore, we need to, if we can, offer some type of um, mandatory uh, uh, masking. Going into buildings and all the buildings in the city of Brunswick that they have to wear face masks. I realize it's hard to well, police the ones. Um, uh, when you're outside, you know, I would like to do that too, but I would like to make sure that we can start in phase one if you want to with um, in the buildings. Uh, you go in the building, you know, you want to wear a face mask. Um, so therefore, uh, we can start start that way. Realizing also that the governor uh, has not uh, come out with uh, giving the, the, um, local authority to, to the governments. However, uh, we need to take consideration of the safety of all our, our people uh, here in the city. Um, we realize that um, I'm hoping that the governor will put out an, uh, 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 another executive order since his order expires at, uh, tonight at, at 12 o'clock. So I was hoping that he would put out and give us the authority to do that. But even if he does not, uh, for discussion purposes, I would like to uh, consider and ask the commission to consider uh, using face masking mandatory uh, in all buildings uh, in the city of Brunswick. Mr. Mayor, I would totally agree with you. Um, uh, 
as you pro you all know, I work in the funeral industry and, and the number of COVID cases that I've seen in the last week is, is, is overwhelming. And, and I, I think that we uh, need to do everything that we can to um, safeguard our citizens. Um, and, you know, just, just if, if we just put this mandate out there that, you know, when you're out in public or you're in public places, especially city buildings where we can control um, that you, you, you do have to wear face mask and, and uh, the social distancing thing that we need to, that we need to do at this time. So we just got to do what we got to do. I want to say this to, uh, I sent this out to all the commissioners and um, I got a, uh, uh, Commissioner Kesha, you don't mind me reading what you sent back. Uh, Go right ahead, please do. Okay. Commissioner Kesha said, I fully agree that uh, we as a commission need to make a statement since enforcement of a mandate <laughs> will probably become a quick problem. We can't say instead of something like, like that, we seek to persuade and compel residents of Brunson to follow strictly the advice of national, state, and local health agencies by number one, wearing masks in all in indoor public places. Number two, practicing six, six feet distances in social situations. Three, consciously avoiding social situations by staying home whenever possible. Brother is at its core in a caring community where residents really do respect the best interests of their neighbors. Now as ever, is the time to respect ourselves and one another by self-monitoring in protection of our health, our community health, protection of you, protection of your, your neighbor, protection of the person who is next to you. So I, I like that what you said, sir, and I, I appreciate your comments completely. Thank you. I'm all for it. I'm all, I'm, I'm all for it. I, I'm all for it as well. This is, this is a health issue. This is, uh, uh, doesn't matter who you are, um, what color you are, what age you are, what your worship preference is. This is a matter that crosses all boundaries. It's not, it's not partisan, it's human and it's healthcare. And, and all of us can relate to that. Okay, also, it's also been uh, uh, proven that uh, the social discipline and the face masking has helped curve the tide of, 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 of the, the positive cases that we have had here earlier uh, in, in the year that uh, uh, we've we seen in the beginning. So, but now that we have kind of got relaxed, we have stopped and it has spiked up quite a bit. So therefore, um, as we move forward, I would like for, for us to uh, ask the city attorney to, to get an uh, executive order in, in place uh, that uh, I can sign uh, by sometime next week. Uh, and also I have talked to, I have made contact with um, the Chamber of Commerce and they are in agreement as well. Some of the business, business owners are in agreement with that as well. So, um, I'm asking the city attorney to, to get something before us pretty quickly. Uh, and if you email it to me, I'll get it to everybody so we can uh, go ahead and I can go ahead and put that order out sometime next week. And it could be, be effective um, uh, probably by, by next Friday or so. And I believe the, the mayor contacted me and discussed this. Um, so I went ahead and pulled the executive order from Mayor Bottoms in um, Atlanta, as well as cut out, Brian. We still can't hear you. Can't hear you, Brian. Can't hear me. No, now we can. Yeah. Uh, sorry, it said my connection is unstable. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I was just saying I'm utilizing the one, the executive orders from Savannah and Atlanta, and I should be able to get something out uh, early next week. Okay. That's in agreement with all, all commissioners. We, we do that, then we'll vote on it. Uh, vote on it by, um, I'll send it to you. And it out. Okay. Uh, at the end of our regular printed schedule uh, for our meeting tonight, uh, it's been a very great, good meeting. Um, with some controversial issues we had to 
to uh, make decisions on, and I appreciate all the commissioners for your input and also for your due diligence and for your patience and for the strongness that you that you stood up for making decisions. Uh, and and uh, I've always known that this commission is one of the best commissions I ever served on. I appreciate you very so very much. So, if there's anything else we need to bring before this commission before I ask for uh, um, to adjourn. Hearing none. Motion, <laughs> Motion second for adjourn. In the, in the comments, questions? None? All right, we stand adjourned. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Have a good, good evening. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.